Good evening. I'm Senator Ray, and this is the Ray of Hope Show. Welcome to the Ray of Hope Show. Uh, we have a special guest tonight. A very, ex I'm very excited uh, because we're going to hear from the first lady of the state of New Jersey, Tammy Murphy. Tammy Murphy has been active uh, and engaged in mental health, not excuse me, maternal health and infant health issues and environmental issues um, for a long time, long before she became first lady. Uh, she's a dynamic figure and um, is making these causes part of uh, her effort uh, to spread the word to improve maternal health, infant health, and improve the environment here in the state of New Jersey. Uh, this is our third segment. You can see our first two segments on uh, live streaming or on YouTube. The first segment was about Nosy's Law. If you remember, let me grab my buddy here. This is... Uh, one of Nosy's friends, one of our friends. But Nosy, um, Nosy was an elephant who still is an elephant, but is free of the uh, having to perform in circuses, which uh, she had to for 40 years, and had to be beaten into submission, as all elephants and wild animals are, for our entertainment. Nosy's law, signed by Governor Murphy, um, uh, will ban the the use of elephants or wild animals in any circuses, thereby ending this cruelty uh, here in the state of New Jersey. Episode number two was about Desmond's Law. Desmond's Law is what we will be advocating for. It's not law yet, uh, but we will try to get it passed, and we will get it passed with your help, uh, which will allow law students from Seton Hall Law School and Rutgers Law School to appear in court in animal cruelty cases to be advocates for the animal. The animal has no voice uh, in these proceedings and it, it will provide not only training for these students, uh, but also to give those animals a voice uh, in the imposition and trial and disposition of, of cases of, of animal cruelty. Uh, most I'm really looking forward to uh, talking to the First Lady about maternal health and infant health, uh, particularly as it applies to education, because the most important time in a child's ability, developmental ability to learn is well before pre-K. It's prenatal to three. Uh, if that mother is not getting nutrition uh, and health care, um, that child is not going to have a good opportunity to get a good education. We have great uh, schools in, in New Jersey, some of the best in the country, but we also have the biggest gap uh, between the best performing schools and the least performing schools. And the way to close that gap is to make sure that, uh, that expected mothers get the proper nutrition, get the proper health care, and the infant uh, child as, as well before they even get into school. Um, and of course, environmental protection, particularly climate change, is what the First Lady wants to speak about and what um, I've been speaking about and what we all need to speak about uh, because we have to make changes now to reduce the um, uh, ozone emissions uh, into the air in New Jersey, throughout America, throughout the world uh, because scientists have proven very, very carefully and thoroughly that if we don't make significant changes now, 50 years from now, one third of New Jersey will be underwater. Uh, that is a disaster that uh, we can't imagine. Remember how sandy, how bad sandy was? Well, this is, would be thousands of times worse than sandy, and we can't wait 50 years to do something about it. So we're going to have a great time, a very, very interesting show to hear what First Lady Tammy Murphy is going to be doing about and has been doing about uh, addressing climate change, environmental protection issues, and advancing maternal health 
and infant health. So stay tuned and welcome back to the Ray of Hope show. Rama Jewelers, located in the Lyndhurst Shopping Center at 413 Valley Brook Avenue, Lyndhurst. Come for all your jeweler needs at Rama Jewelers, where you will find a fine selection of necklaces, earrings, rings, and bracelets. Choose from one of our complete sets, our many signature items, or find the perfect engagement ring. Come on down, that's Rama Jewelers at 413 Valley Brook Ave, Lyndhurst. Call 201-939-5784 or visit us online today. Pen & Pencil Properties, Jersey City. Shape in the workplace with state-of-the-art office spaces that address your company desires. Building residences that define your home environment, adjacent to all modes of transportation with on-site parking available. The right address, the right lease. Call 201-521-9000 or visit online at panapintoproperties.com. Pen & Pencil Properties, building Jersey City for everyone. Good Friend Self Storage in North Bergen, New Jersey is a fully climate controlled facility equipped with state of the art security, packing supplies, a refer friend program, and multiple loading docks convenient for commercial use. Located just off of Route 3 at 4301 Tunnelly Avenue, Route 1 and 9. Call 201 867 2444 or visit us on the web today. Good Friend Self Storage, let us be your good friend. The Jersey City Medical Center, you know it for its award-winning, life-saving ambulance service. It's also your health hub, with health and wellness locations staffed with certified professionals all through Hudson County. The Jersey City Medical Center, here to help you with your healthy, here when you need us the most. The Jersey City Medical Center, visit us on the net to learn more. Jersey City Medical Center, Robert Wood Johnson Barnabas Health Facility. Let's be healthy together. Welcome back to the Ray of Hope show. What an exciting guest we have today. Uh, Tammy Murphy, the first lady of the state of New Jersey to talk about what has driven her for so many years to help with maternal health issues, infant health, infant mortality, and to improve the environment of the state of New Jersey. But well, Tammy, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having first, me. First, let's, let's hear from you about your first year experience as first lady. Uh, well, I would say um, no one prepared me for the job. No, it's, so there, it is, there is no uh, preparation for First Lady. No prep. <laughs> uh, so I've kind of just dug in like I usually do. Mm -hmm. um, Phil and I have worked as a team always. So I have done anything I can to help Phil and uh, Sheila advance their agenda for New Jersey. Mm -hmm. uh, I show up pretty much every day. Uh, every day has something new and different to hold. And uh, I'm all around the state. And it's been, um, it's been really humbling, I would say that. It's been that, fun and it's been humbling. Well, it has to be fun. It has been fun That's and it's been humbling. That's very important. Do, do yes. you know the story about John Lennon? I don't John, know. John Lennon know. was in high school and the teacher gave him a, an assignment. The, the, the whole class the assignment. Write down what you want to be when you grow up. What do you think John Lennon wrote that he wants to be when he grows up? I hope he said a, a, a music writer, singer. What did he say? He said, I want to be happy. Oh, and okay. the teacher said, John, you didn't understand the assignment. And he said, no, you don't understand life. <laughs> so I know you're enjoying yourself and you're happy with what you're doing. And, that, and that's the most important thing. No, so let's right. talk about one of your, your most uh, important causes for sure. And that's maternal health and infant health. Uh, because we certainly have a serious problem here in New Jersey with... Uh, maternal, high rate of maternal um, um, uh, deaths mm -hmm. and infant mortality as well. So what, it, what do you think we should be doing and what are you doing about uh, in, uh, making that number go down? Because I know you are. Sure. So um, I'd say back in a year, about a year ago, the very beginning when Phil took office, mm -hmm. uh, we learned that, the, um, that New Jersey is ranked 45th out of 50 in the United States of America in terms of infant and maternal health. And we're the second wealthiest state in the nation. Correct, with an incredible healthcare, uh, innovative economy, 
and there's just no reason. So I, uh, Phil asked me if I could look at that for him. Um, being a mother of four, it was something that's right up my alley. So uh, I thought, I have to say, I went in with a bias, assuming that I was going to find that it was all to do with prenatal care and that if we could get these women to... I think that's why I, I, I have that bias as well. Okay. Yes. So, uh, but it's it, not just that. It's not. So it started off that we had um, just two departments who I was working with within the cabinet. Um, Department of Health, of course, and it's now 12 cabinets, cabinet members who are involved in this. Um, and that is because it is literally everything. It includes uh, transportation, it's insurance, it's access to um, food, so agriculture's involved. Um, so we've got Dobie, we've got um, agriculture, we've got transportation, we've got the treasurer, treasurer Liz Moyo is involved. Um, of course, we've got Division of Children and Families. We have um, Human Services. It, it, it's, there are, it's such a, a complicated um, problem that uh, can most easily be defined as systemic racism because uh, the numbers are bad, but they're really terrible if you drill down and see the differences between primarily um, black moms and black babies versus white moms and white babies. Make sure you include environmental protection too. Of course. Particularly in terms of environmental justice. We have a situation in um, Elizabeth Port and Elizabeth where I was born um, in the ironbound section of Newark, areas of Jersey City and Bayonne with truck emissions. Of course. Lined up to get into the uh, uh, Port Authority and spewing out this, uh, this contaminated uh, air uh, that has increased the asthma rate for the entire neighborhood and most and of course the most vulnerable are the children and and senior citizens as absolutely well. absolutely um, so so essentially what we've found is that there are um, there are some some big items that can be changed quickly so we can reduce the number of c-sections that are being being how do you do that you just set up protocols a lot of this um, as I said, it's systemic racism, it's, it's unintended bias. It's um, doctors whose schedules can be more easily handled because they can set up C-section after C-section. Wow. Um, but, but then what you also find is, is for a lot of women who have these C-sections, they don't have access for a after they've had this child. So they will go home and you know that's a major operation having a C-section. So if you don't go back and have your checkups or you don't have access to transportation, or you don't have access to childcare to help with your other children, there's a lot of reasons why people might not follow through. So reducing the number of C-sections that are, that are not necessary. That would not have come to mind. Oh. How did you come about that, finding this out? It's, 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 I have spent the last year wandering around the state, meeting with all sorts of stakeholders, whether they are health systems, whether they are foundations, doulas, home health care workers, coalitions, I mean, Nonprofits, everything, and there's a number of things. Everybody would agree that there are too many C-sections. So we're go, you're going to obviously change some regulations in terms of uh, of, of doctors and hospitals. So, so Sharif El Nahal, the commissioner um, at the Department of Health, he is currently trying to come up with some of those protocols for hospitals, and there's there's a there's an overwhelming desire to fix this because apparently 50 to 60 percent of the issues that kill these women and children, we can fix. Yeah. I mean, if it's easy enough to say, okay, you aren't gonna be able to do the C-sections. Another one, I'll give you another one. Well, um, hold, hold on, on the C-sections. Yeah. Also, I'm sure uh, the hospitals, they, they should have required follow-up care, right? And reaching out, being proactive. Yes, yes. Okay. There's, there, it's, it's, it, it's a whole combination of things on that okay. point. The other piece um, is another easy one. These are just kind of some of the things that we can do. Another one is that for a lot of women, most of the deaths for the mothers happen within like the first 45 days of that child's life. So let me just go back and tell you, so you know this. Um, if, you are a, if you are a black child born in the state of New Jersey right now, your chances of living or your chances of dying in the first 365 days of your life are three times greater than a white child. If you are a black mother giving birth in the state of New Jersey, your chance of dying in the first 365 days of that child's life are five times greater than that of a white woman. So um, another piece of this puzzle is, just to give you an example, is um, there need to be protocols in the hospitals. So if, if a woman comes and presents at a hospital and says, I have a headache, or I have been running, I have had the chills, or 
this could be um, an underlying problem that's related to having given birth. So doesn't it seem like one of the first questions anybody should ask in the emergency room is, did you deliver a baby in the last 45 days? If they get around to asking a question after they're waiting in the waiting room for an hour, right? Right, but it, yes. it can be easily, it can be one of the first questions is asked. If that, mm. if you find out the answer is yes, that puts you in a totally different category. But if you don't have to ask the question. And they have triage systems, so that should be part of the top of the right. system, right? Wonderful. So there's, there's, there's little fixes like that. Mm -hmm. There's things that can happen. Um, we also, you know, I think one of the biggest challenges here in New Jersey, probably across our country, if not the world, is that good people are working on these problems, but they're in their own silo. Yes. And so, you know, everywhere I went, you know, someone would have a great solution to working with mothers who uh, have been living on the streets or who are, who are um, addicted to some kind of opioid, for example. They might know how to deal with those people, but someone who's in the health system in a different county is still trying to come to grips with how they can, how they can best handle that problem. So one of my greatest uh, assets and my biggest value that I bring, I think, for New Jersey is that I can convene people. I can put people together and make them talk to one another. So over the course of the year, I've done that. Um, we had an infant and maternal mortality summit um, at Drumthwacket, and we brought together um, these, all the different commissioners. We brought together these foundations, and instead of putting all the foundations at one table and all the commissioners at another table, every single table had a mix of different types of people. And then I, what I did is I gave each table questions that pertain to a particular um, cabinet official who was and the, at that And this table. will be an ongoing process. We're going to do it you. every year. We're going to do it every year. So we did it already, but it was really fascinating because the foundation could hear from directly from a, a doctor. Dialogue is the most important thing to solve this. Well, thank you very much. I know you're going to keep up the good work and uh, you are doing a great job and looking forward to m more work in, on behalf of women's health and infant mortality. Thank you very much. Thank you. And we'll see you at our next section. Burns Brothers Memorials, Monuments, and Markers, 787 Tunley Avenue, Jersey City. Hudson County's only monument maker, serving all faiths and cemeteries. Design studio and launch inventory on site. Cemetery inscriptions and custom orders welcome. Burns Brothers Memorials, Monuments, and Markers, 787 Tunley Avenue, just south of Seacorkers Road. Craftsmanship that will last for all eternity. Burns Brothers, Jersey City, Albert H. Hopper, North Arlington. Visit us on the net. It takes more than a state-of-the-art medical facility to make a great hospital. It takes a team of dedicated medical professionals. That's the Jersey City Medical Center, Hudson County's number one hospital. Medical teams consisting of New Jersey's top doctors, magnet award-winning nurses, and accomplished hospital associates, all committed to your good health. That's what you have at the Jersey City Medical Center. Make Hudson County's number one hospital your first choice. Visit us on the web at BarnabasHealth.org. Newport, the luxury waterfront community on the Hudson River, offers a quality of life you deserve in 10 high-rise rental towers with amenities such as the on-site Newport Path subway, light rail and ferry service, Newport Town Square, three playgrounds, dog run, upscale restaurants, retail giants like Sears, JCPenney, Macy's, and Target. Morton Williams Supermarket is just outside your front door. A health and fitness club, spa, skating rink, and medical facilities are also on site. NewportNJ.com Enjoy the New York skyline from Newport Town Square. Manhattan is just one path stop away or quick ride through the Holland Tunnel. Nursery and private elementary schools all on site. 12 screen movie theater at the Newport Center Mall. Want to visit Newport? Stay at the Western or Marriott Hotel. Go to NewportNJ.com for details. Newport has luxurious towers, great restaurants, shopping, New York skyline views, schools, playgrounds, a marina and yacht club, gym, spa, fine wine, fine living. It's incredible. It's you. NewportNJ.com. Newport. Live like you want. The Jersey City Medical Center. You know it for its award-winning, life-saving ambulance service. It's also your health hub. With health and wellness locations staffed with certified professionals all through Hudson County. The Jersey City Medical Center. Here to help you with your healthy. Here when you need us the most. The Jersey City Medical Center. Visit us on the net to learn more. Jersey City Medical Center, Robert Wood Johnson, Barnabas Health Facility. Let's be healthy together. Pen and Pencil Properties, Jersey City. Shape in the workplace with state-of-the-art office spaces that address your company desires. 
building residences that define your home environment, adjacent to all modes of transportation with on-site parking available. The right address, the right lease. Call 201-521-9000 or visit online at panapintoproperties.com. Panapinto Properties, building Jersey City for everyone. Welcome back to the Ray of Hope show. Before we talk about climate change and what the First Lady is uh, going to be doing to uh, protect us from the uh, uh, terrible consequences of, uh, of climate change that we foresee and our scientists uh, certainly have predicted uh, will happen if we don't do something about it right now, we're going to talk about the Nurture New Jersey campaign. Thank you. Let's Thank talk you. about it. So we have just launched um, Nurture New Jersey and that is for um, every baby, every mother, every family in New Jersey. Um, that is essentially an awareness campaign that is going to bring together everything that we have done to this point since the beginning of the administration that's dealing with infant and maternal mortality. And it's going to also um, include everything that all of the other cabinet members are working on in their departments. Mm -hmm. Um, it's going to be a complete collaboration across the administration as well as outside of the administration. So any, any ongoing things that we're doing, like my family festivals, which I've done already in Patterson and Trenton, I'm going to be doing one in Camden, and then we're going to do one in, in Atlantic City and in Newark. Um, that, will be, that will be featured under this umbrella, um, as will some social media. Um, but it's really, truly going to be an awareness campaign so that everybody across New Jersey understands this problem and we can help as many families as we possibly can. So we're going to have to have you on a future show. Yes. With, with other participants. Okay. To help spread uh, the awareness. Excellent. Thank okay. you. Okay. I appreciate that. Now let's talk about climate change. Okay. What are you going to do about it? What am I going to do about it? <laughs> um, well, uh, I am a climate change believer. So let's just start so there. So am I. So let's am just start I. there. <laughs> Uh, I will tell you that, um, you know, again, I'm doing everything I can to help Phil and Sheila with their agenda. Sheila Oliver being the... Lieutenant Governor. Lieutenant Governor of the state of New Jersey. Lieutenant Gover Governor Oliver. Um, I served in the uh, legislature with her. She was Speaker of the Assembly. Lovely, lovely lady, woman, leader, fabulous. activist. She's great. She's fabulous. Okay. I, I, I love Sheila. Yep, yeah, me too. Um, so, and I believe in her, by the way. Um, she has, she brings pr pr um, incredible potential to the table and just mm -hmm. is doing so much. Um, but um, as far as climate change goes, Phil has said that he wants New Jersey. Phil being? My husband, the governor. <laughs> the, governor the governor of the state of New, of New Jersey. The governor of the state of New Jersey has, has uh, suggested that he would like New Jersey. He has mandated that New Jersey will be 100% um, fossil fuel free by the year 2050. There are a lot of steps that have to happen between now and 2050 to get to that point, um, which include offshore wind and community solar and um, you know, rejoining Reggie. And there's so many things that have to come together. But we are actively working on that right now. Um, you know, there's a lot of people who would say that uh, you can have either a clean um, environment or you can have good paying jobs. And that is a complete and utter myth. You can totally. have both. You can totally. have both. Absolutely. And indeed, a clean environment promotes good paying jobs. We're on the same page. When I, when many decades ago, uh, when I passed the Environmental Cleanup Responsibility Act, which required, we're the only state in the nation that requires companies to clean up their sites or post a bond for the cleanup before, um, before they sell. And uh, gloom and doom came from the business community, the bankers, mm -hmm. the realtors, uh, uh, the business, uh, uh, New Jersey business. You're going to, going to destroy the economy of the state of New Jersey. Indeed, we save the economy of the state of New Jersey because if we don't have a healthy uh, uh, economical and environment system, we're not going to have anything. So you're certainly on the right track uh, in terms of, because we're, we're at ground zero for climate change, aren't we? We are, we are. Um, we are in, I serve um, on Al Gore's environmental board and I had the 
um, great uh, joy. Uh, I guess it's joy. It was a little bit miserable to watch some of this, but I watched this summer and participated in one of his climate training programs. And uh, New Jersey is definitely on the front lines. Um, for so the Al Gore, in addition to inventing the internet, <laughs> <laughs> was the, was the first was really long I, I remember listening to his uh, his CD they actually had CDs back in my day uh, on his book um, An Inconvenient Truth Inconvenient Truth yes. yes yes and that was over 10 years ago I believe that oh more more, more than more and we've still done very little about that and what's what's our president doing about it do you know I can't help you right now. I'm, I, I just really hope our, you know, government. Well, so let me, it, let me so answer. Just go there. <laughs> that was actually a rhetorical question. I, yeah. Okay. Because yeah. what our president has done, there has been a, I don't know how many nations, over 90, I believe, have these accords, the Paris Accords. Yes. Uh, that um, where, where they make a commitment to reduce ozone emissions. President Trump withdrew That's the United correct. States from it. And we're again because we're a coastal nation, you know, our, our maybe doesn't care about New Jersey, Florida, North Carolina, or, or, or I'm sure he does, but he certainly does, hasn't acted like it by uh, withdrawing from a national, uh, global-wide effort. We can't. This isn't one country's problem. This is the entire world's problem. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Um, you're right, but but certainly governments, governors, and mayors. Uh, went to, you know, to have joined forces and they're trying to stand up and, and do the right thing, even if, even if our federal government is not going to do that. Mm -hmm. So um, we do have that going for us. Uh, but it, it just reminds me, you know, there's so much to do in New Jersey. Um, the, the tourism industry, everything that we get from the shore is, is a major backbone of tourism, our Tourism, I think, is number one or number two. I yeah. think number one. I think it's number one. I believe the pharmaceutical industry was number one. But now tourism, tourism is, is like forty one. million. So, yes. but all I was going to say is, you know, it just reminds me that we had um, one event that we were trying to stop the president from drilling offshore, as yes. you as you may recall. Yeah. Um, and you know, we had Republicans and Democrats together who all agreed that was not a good idea for the state of New Jersey. Not a good idea off of the coast of Alaska. No. Not in or in the Gulf of of Mexico. Correct. Certainly not in the Atlantic Ocean next to the state of New Jersey, which we rely so much uh, on our tourism. Sure. And, and I don't think oil or gas bills are going to know what state lines are anyway. So exactly. I think it's probably pretty smart not so to do that. You're doing a remarkable job. You've been working at this. As you said, you were on Al Gore's uh, uh, council for, for many years. Mm -hmm. uh, so I know you will continue the work yes. and use the added... Uh, Gravitas, if you will, being first lady. I'll do my best. And absolutely. I, and I know you will. Thank you very much. We're going to have you uh, come back to talk more about maternal health and infant mortality as well. Would love that. Thank so, you. So fantastic. Thank you. And I'm going to give you a Ray of Hope hat. Thank you. And make sure you give this to the governor. Okay. And next time I see him, I want him to be wearing it. I'll let him know. There I'll we go. Okay. Thank All you right. so much for having me. Well, thank you. And... Um, uh, to our watching audience, uh, you've just seen a, a very dynamic uh, uh, presentation of uh, addressing the very difficult problems facing the state of New Jersey, both with regard to maternal health, infant health, climate change, uh, environmental protection. Uh, make sure you watch us on uh, Cablevision, Comcast, and you can see all of our shows live streaming or on YouTube. See you next time to the Ray of Hope show.